and my fiber sits into it now. Oh, yeah? I'm on it. Say good. Like 20 something. That's a lot in this case. That's a lot in this case. All right, for guys who just came in, the first two multiple choice are on the Cornell note sheet. It's getting done. Now, I have professionally developed today after yesterday's seminar. I am, but there's a rule that has to change. This is somebody looked right at me when he said it. No one's allowed to go to class with Joe Fox. Don't talk to them. Maybe in colleges they don't buy Bruno Bethes. We have Bruno Bethes. Not just the freshmen. Huh? The idea is like you're still sitting in the first fifth year, but you know you can fail the discipline later, but I don't know. No. Listen, I ain't the one who handled my staff. I think it's personally on staff. That's the freshman. I think it's more than just the freshman. At least it's not a college. At least not purely. My friend showed like showed me their badges. They had like stalls ripped off, like their sinks ripped off. I mean, I that was just a little. Well, we'll and somehow I figure out not to. Like, I don't do third class or whatever. What if what if you only have like what if you have no degrees? You go in between. I, I have a day where I teach every period. Yeah. I figure out. Oh, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna come back. This is why you don't do well in physics. Yeah. You should have any class, you do. Yeah. Is there a reason you're like it? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of problems with the reasons right now. Who's your teacher? Who's your teacher? What subject is it? Art. I have a teacher who lives in the art room. He barely really says enough. Some of the teachers even know they exist. Yeah, I, I can. All right. Mr. Shannon, are you more confident with the first question or the second question? First one. First one. How about you, Matt? Not the second? No, I work with you tonight. Yeah. All right, Matt, what do you got for the question? D is a broccoli. What do you got? D is a dogwood. Those are two confident people. We got a split answer. I go to Aiden since we got to get a lot out of you today because we're going to be missing you for a while. I say D is a dogwood. All right. What's wrong with D in your opinion? Sounds like a good thing. Dining at my favorite restaurant. Sounds positive. Why don't you pick it, Aiden? Who's 
pains of the bird Yeah. So it's the externality is getting something that you don't pay. So it's okay. D, T, S, and Good job, Right, I'll turn to this one. In Holmes, I heard you're really upset that we didn't have school. Mr. Smith, tell you that, like if Mr. Sexton sent me an email to say, see him, I'd be more scared than Mr. Sexton. All right, here's the loanable funds graph. Ian Holmes, what's happening here? Deficit spending, what am I shifting? Uh, from then to the right. Okay, so what's happening to interest rates? It's going up. All right, so that means I can cross out A, B, and E. Right? What did you shift there? Uh, I, I, I flipped the line. So I flipped the other way. Well, what did you flip? Did you do I shifted to bear the other way. Okay, increase it. Yeah. Okay. All right. A, B, and E. All right. That leaves you C and D. Go. What? No, it's quantity of vulnerable funds. Okay. So if interest rates go up, what happens to investment? You can see, right? Yes, James. Doesn't supply shift up? When the government increases interest. Um, it's I like to shift demand because it's borrowing, but if you shift supply, interest rates are going up too. So when I shifted supply left, I got interest rates increase in investment fees. No, the line is quantity of one of the funds, it's not investment. Okay, but by your interest rates, investment fees. Okay, and, and you're, you're kind of, is it real interest rate? Yes, it really is. Alex, sorry to wait. I'll talk lower. And you can think of it as investment, James, the way you did. It's quantity of vulnerable funds and real interest. Okay. All right. Someone asked why there were no boards Friday. I said I do boards every I, I just trying to get us ready for this unit test. On Wednesday, and like we had great professional development yesterday. Have you noticed your teachers are like crisper, sharper, lessons are better, better learning today? Huh? Yeah, you guys should go back. Yeah. 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 We'll see how professional you can develop to work tomorrow. All right, let us get on the board. Dear God, um, let's pray for peace throughout the world. Let's pray for health for all of us. Um, let's thank, be thankful for the good weather. Let's continue to move on and get the most out of this very short period. St. John Baptist LaSalle, live Jesus in our hearts. <laughs> all right, here's what we got going. I'll be here after class. To do a review, it should take about 25 minutes. Um, and then I'll also do it at 7:30 tonight. The practice test is online and the monetary part of the topic page. I take it. I think there's some difficult questions in there that can help you. I did a video going through not the practice test, but other multiple choice questions and breaking them down and trying to get the main points across. So you can watch that. There is this thing on the topics page, reserve requirements. It goes through every scenario they can ask you about the reserve requirement. Like if you put in $1,000, what's the immediate change in money supply? What's the maximum? It's a great page you should look at. All right, that's all. That's tomorrow, 30 multiple choice. Any questions? Again, I can't be here before school tomorrow because we have done small groups. If you have a question, just like email the question 62, you'll probably be emailing me like at two in the morning, I'll be dreaming, but I'll wake up and I'll answer it and you could have it on um, your answer before you come to school. I'm also off periods 
what's smart? No, like Wednesday, right? I don't think I have to be in the library. I'll probably be in the ARC period one and three. Okay, so you can come in there and track me down. All right, there are like three new graphs in the LRAS graph you need to know. Is the gold turbo in its multiple choices tomorrow? No! I might even sneak in on um, the FRQ. It's not going to sneak by you, Ian, but you know, the rest of the guys, who knows? All right, anytime you hear monetary policy, you're the genius. The Fed, the central bank, this is the potential graph. All right, I want to increase the money supply. Give me one way I can. One way I can, James. Discount rate. Discount rate. What am I doing with it? Uh, All right, you've got to know these. Like, you got to know these tomorrow, like the back of your hand. What's another, Ian Williams? Did you say increase? Decrease. Matt? Buying bonds. All right, and buying bonds. Those are the three ways you can increase the money supply. Okay. Why is it called open market operations? I mean, you're just selling up bonds. Because it's a market. The, there's a market to sell them. Okay. All right. All right. So those are the three. So if they want to uh, expand the economy, we're going with these three. They're going to um, contract the economy. We're going to move that up. We're going to sell. We're going to raise that. Okay? You have to. You have to know that. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. Here, think of: Do I need more or less money in my pocket? Okay. And that's the shift. The biggest shift of the demand price levels. Be on the lookout. Now, are they going to say price levels or no? They're going to have you shift AD to the right, and you're going to have to figure out price levels are up. So you got to do some thinking. You're okay, Kevin. Yeah, some thinking. Aaron Howell, you're okay. Not a lot, Aaron. No. All right. Any questions on the money supply? Welcome back, Mr. Buckman. How are you doing? Okay. <clears throat> Did you watch any of the videos? Okay. So you up to speed? Kind of. All right. You might not be able to do the friends tomorrow. You might have to be with me. All right. Multiple funds. Supply, big savings, makes sense, right? That's supply. Uh, budget deficit, sorry, and then surplus. What shifts the demand in the loanable fund? Come on, Aiden, you have it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just putting borrowing. That's good. What else? Come on, Alex. Dig deep. No. 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 I'm digging deep. Huh? Government spending. Government spending. And anything with business investment. You knew that, Alex. Okay. All right. That's audible funds. We're good? Yes. You good? Yeah. Okay. Matt? Yep. You sure? Thanks, so. So I'll run out and pull you off the baseball field if you get it wrong tomorrow.
I learned that yesterday in my profession. Oh, you know what I truthfully learned? That I teach the nicest kids in the school. Because what other people were describing going into school, I've never seen. Huh? I don't know, like, and they were talking about, like, I thought I was in public school. No, it was horrible. Kids don't listen. I mean, not that kids listen, but, like, you tell someone to do something, and it's every guy in the school that does what they have to do. I don't know. All right. Troy and Lauren went Phillips trucks. I appreciate you, is what I was trying to say. All right, inflation and unemployment. <clears throat> is there a question on it tomorrow? No, JK, but it could be on the FRQ, so we're going to go over it, if that's okay with you. Thank you, JK. JK, could you ever imagine yourself when a teacher said, sit down, just refusing to sit down? Not right. Like, what, what is, like people are saying things like that. Uh, a big thing was, too, this freaked me out. All you guys feeding your shoes, who cares? But some teachers were saying, hey, I'm going to take their feet out of the this is, this is the biggest problem facing America right now. Your feet. It's been four years. I still have to look like a piece of paper. Well, you've had a couple of hours. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you talk out. Again, I might have to jack you up and see the first bite of the year. All right, this is expected inflation. All right, Mr. Buckman, we're going to test you. If AD ships right, how do I show that on the Phillips curve? Oh. oh, yeah, Mr. Buckman. We couldn't get you there. Slides opposite AD. Good job. And Ian Holmes, how do we shift the Phillips curve? Uh, we shift it the opposite of the entire Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now, now dig in that, gotta focus, focus. Sit up, don't get yourself comfortable. Yeah, so you could have like going from A <coughs> to B, say uh, A to B to like C. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, it does be longer. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you're on your way to being an economist. Wait till you go to college and you have friends who are taking econ and they're crying. Literally. This happens every year, kids come back. They're crying because it's so freaking hard, and you've already got your six credits. And you'll know more than that. You'll know more than that, JK. You can tell all those smart kids at Cornell, I'm smart. I just think it's smart. I'm taking this one. Maybe I should work for that. Any questions on the three graphs? Okay, there's three to five questions like this. We got to get these right. $1,000 deposit, reserve requirement is 0 0.1. Let's go, Matt Shannon, you're talking me through this. How much is the most the money supply can eat for? Uh, first, oh, uh, first you find the money more. <laughs> okay. okay. One over point one is ten. Yep. Then uh, ten percent of a thousand is one hundred. So a hundred has to be required reserved. Yep. How much can I load out? Nine hundred. And I times that by the money multiplier, and that gets me the money supply to increase by nine thousand. 
Yeah, that's a bond deposit. Okay. Well, thank you, because that's a good thing. If you buy a thousand dollar bond at point one, you don't take anything out of the reserve. You just go a thousand times ten. Okay. You got to know the difference. Now, more. If this was a withdrawal, how much would the money supply decrease? Yeah, you're just putting dash. And if this was selling bonds, you're just putting a negative. Okay? Close the three to five. We got to get right. So you got to go deposit a bond, withdrawal is deposit, and work your way through. Any questions on the graphs of these two? By the way, all these things are covered in that reserve required sheet. And more, if bonus. That one's really good for that book. Okay, here's what we'll do. Let's go to banks and money creation sheet. Matt! Yeah! I don't think I closed the name out because I like to. Be in the most uncomfortable position you can. Stand up. Do something. You can stand up and go to the back if you want to do the problem. Let's do 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. This mark is just so good. It's really, really good. I for eleven, because you you don't realize this. The cash on hand and the deposit at the Fed. They're both part of reserve requirement. So reserve requirement is 25,000. That's what I'm talking about. No, because you can't be more tomorrow. These are not calculated. They're made, and we're not calculated. So better here. Yeah. Makes up a couple of problems better for tomorrow. Thank you. 
All right, let's go, Mr. Genius. Um, Melanie deposits a thousand in cash, 0.25. Walk me through what I have to do. No. So, what did you do? Okay, if I get you what? Four, right? That gets you the money multiple. Okay. And did you take a thousand times four? Yeah. So what did you forget? Correct. So how much has to be put in required reserve? So two fifty. Okay. That left you how much? Times that by four, and that's good. Okay, I got that. So, Aaron, the good thing to do for all these problems is like it's a thousand, right? You find the multiplier, and then you go, How much is reserve? How much could be? How much is excess? Now, for a bond, what's always going to be a dash for reserve, right? But it just reminds you that you have to do it. Because you knew you had to do it, you just forgot. Right? You had the knowledge. All right, Mark, you got the next one? Huh? What? Thank you. 
Okay, I don't know if you hear when I said both of them are counting, so it's 25,000. Yet you really should know that it's not well written. So it'd be 25 over 100,000, so it'd be 0.25. Yeah. How much would the money supply decrease if there was a risk of service requirement? Well, it depends what the reserve requirement is. Well, like, if the reserve requirement says, like, you don't have to collect any money for reserves, how much would it be? Uh, in, are you asking for like an exact number? Like, what would like the multiplier be if there is no reserve requirement? I mean, like if there is no reserve, like let's put it at point one, right? Or um, point oh one, you know, it'd be like by hundred. It'd be multiplying like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We'd have inflation. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mr. Buckman, house number 12. All right, take so deposits, 500. Mr. Buckman, how much has to be put in required reserve? How much could he want out? Okay. All right. Now, Colin, if the question said, what's the most the money supply can increase? Right, then we have one over 0.2, I need it over. That'd be five times 400 would be 2,000. Okay? This is the one that they were confused on, right? Yeah. This the question isn't great. Like, I think there's two kind of answers. Yeah, do you feel good about this? So the hundred is a ratio of hundred cents. That's about one cent. So if it's one cent over five hundred, I guess you have four. Oh, but that's a that isn't a thousand. Yeah. No, thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Oh, okay, okay, that's that's it. Um, yeah, it helps one cent sell for cash, but the ratio is ratio of hundred cents. And since I finished an option, so that's eight hundred. All right, so 200 had to go into required, and now you have 800 excess, right? Did you have previous excess? Yeah, we have 800 dollars of excess. So now your total excess is 16. How much did you lend out? <coughs> you lend out 600 dollars. So you're left with about. Now, did anyone get 200? I just took that. Matt, were you able to follow that? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because some people said thought more where it says um, the yeah. banks that lend out an additional, they thought it meant an additional, you know, that you already had 800 to lend out, so an additional 200. And I can see the way that's worded that, that I would take it. Okay. All right. Um, Aaron Howell. Yeah, you thought I forgot about you. Suppose your grandma gave you a hundred. You'd be happy, wouldn't you? Yeah, me too. All right. How much has to go into reserve requirements? How much is left for excess? All right, that's the first answer, right? All right, the reserve requirement is 0.1. What's the money multiplier? Yeah, you got it, right? So, how long are you good? I think it's genius. You good? Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, there's three to five of these questions tomorrow. So, let's clear it up now if anyone has any questions. Get to number 11. Uh, number 11. I get that to the um, What's the. How do you determine when you use the money multiplier? So they're telling you increase in points for the system. system. What like throughout? What a maximum. When they're saying in the bank, 
this bank or initially no. And if it was like 13, it would be spelled out. And that 11? Yeah. Oh. Just know that it's reserved requiring until the demand deposit. Oh, okay. They'll just give you the reserve requirement. They won't do it like that. Okay. Anything else up here that you don't feel good about? Yes. Yeah. All right. So here's for all these. I think like so the point two, the multiplier is 10, right? Well, don't worry yourself on this. Don't even worry yourself. You have to keep going through the whole This one? Yeah. You're going to do it. Okay. How much is the reserve requirement? Um, we'll do first. Let's do um, 500. Uh, so 100. 100. How much should be loaned out? Uh, 400. Right, that was the answer. The maximum for the money supply? Uh, Uh, so multiply five thousand. Two thousand, right? Five thousand. <laughs> what was it? Yeah. Was it multiply five here? Yeah. Oh, five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Three claim. Let's race to uh, money market and loanable funds, and let's do three and four. Three of it. Did you read what three is for you? Okay. What's a decrease in the demand for money would result from? I do four and five. Anyone think they have number three right? No one? I think I have something, but I'm not sure. All right. What's the shift of demand? What? No, no, it's, that's government. Price level, do you need more or less money? So what's the answer there? C, the man will de a decrease in the price level. You need less money in your pocket because things are less, the man shifts left. How do I look at the big Inflation decreases. Are they normal? I know, we're doing the one before. Oh, a decrease in the demand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you, you know, you're going to the next one. Inflation increases from two to five percent. All right, price levels are going up. So therefore, Keon, shift to the right because I need more money. There's going to be two questions like that on the test tomorrow. So we got to look for them. Any questions? What was number five? What just read it? Uh, the 
This is place you agree. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I'll be here after school, and I'll be at my house at 7.30, zoom it right into your home. Have a great day. Well, it's not the